Hey yo, what it do, what it do, what it do. Welcome to episode three, yo, the big 30. Access to Combat Podcast. It's your boy Ray, Ray Boogie, Big Banana, in the house, my brother, Blueberry Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> who go the boss? Who go got next? You already know. And before we get into any of this, you already know the business. Please follow, like, subscribe, comment, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody enjoying the visuals right now? Drop a comment, like, comment, comment again. Drop another comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop another comment. And also, don't forget to like. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcast, you already know. Um, but before we get into this UFC Noche card, this... Uh, this it, car- the proper way is Noche UFC. Noche UFC. Noche comes first. That's not how they have it listed here. Oh, they do. I'm telling you, that's the way it is, brother. That's so weird. I mean, it's proper, right? But... Yes. They, Noche, the, way, the, the, way all, the way all the UFC commentary is listing it as is UFC Noche, so I just follow the lead there. But anyway, before I was really interrupted, we're going to recap our bets from last <laughs> weekend. <laughs> um, break even night for me, a little bit of a losing night for my brother, both of, both of us technically because I'm under, but um, let's kick it off. Uh, tie to Ivasa Moneyline. God, which button is it? Take a guess, man. There you go. <laughs> we had uh, my brother had Pedro Takali ends in sub. Then we had Miranda's money line. <laughs> we hit on that one. Oh yeah, Jesus. <laughs> we had Miranda Listen. inside inside the distance. We had Hasferat Kiones and Malarkey Magdesi fights to start round three. And then it gets ugly, guys, with these parlays. We had Jenkins, Ober, Kopp, Adesanya. <laughs> Jenkins, you know, dislocated his arm from his body. <laughs> Adesanya got with the improbable loss this weekend. I don't think, there's a lot of people who didn't see it coming. I called it. <laughs> We had, um, I had Cop, Olberg, and Adesanya by knockout or decision. Adesanya lost, and then Olberg wanted to be a submission artist. He wanted to be, you know, Gordon Ryan this weekend. <laughs> we had um, Malarkey and Jenkins. Round three, finish or decision. That didn't hit because Jenkins, you know, got melted. His arm got melted at least. Then my brother had Olberg and Cop via knockout. And then my brother had Tai Tuivasa knockout round two at plus 1100 as a long shot. And I had Tuivasa, I sprinkle a little bit on the first and second round via knockout. Not terrible, not terrible considering, <laughs> not terrible considering that we had that many um, off bets, but we just knew where to put our money, quality over quantity. Had losing nights, but we mitigated some losses because we were just very confident on Miranda. And that's where we kind of laid most of our money on. We thought the rest of the parlays would pay out, guys, but unfortunately it didn't. It is what it is. On to the next one. Um, and I'll give it on over to my brother for that. All right. Well, properly described as UFC Noche. Wrong. It's Noche. <laughs> I told you. UFC. I told you, bro. No, no, you got me messed up. No, no, no. You've been hearing that <laughs> shit all week. Yeah, from you. No, not from me. From you. You tossed me up, boy. Not from me. Not from me. Anyway, listen. Noche de UFC. Mm. Moroccan sounds. Noises. <laughs> Celebrating Mexican Independence Day. Mm. <laughs> uh, this card uh, used to be better. It's not bad for a fight night. It's, I mean, considering there's a championship fight on it. But uh, if this was a pay-per-view, it'd be terrible. Uh, we had about nine or ten fights fall out here. This card was supposed to have Chris Curtis and Anthony Hernandez. It's supposed to have Shavkat, Gaslam. Lupita was supposed to be fighting Sam Hughes. Cynthia Cavio was supposed to be fighting at least Reed. D-Rod. Ended up testing positive, falling out of his fight. Supposed to be fighting Santiago Pontenebio. Natan Levy literally fell out this weekend. 
Anthony Hernandez supposed to be fighting Kapilov. Lucindo was supposed to be fighting both Elise Reed and Josephine. I'm a, I, her name is like K Nut Canute. I've heard her name pronounced like Knutson. a, 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 a lot of ways. Is. I'm gonna call her Nutson. She's a badass. I think the K is silent. But anyway, yeah, this card got kind of tossed. It's an 11-fight card headlined by Shashenko and Grasso. Part 2. Great rematch. The run back. co mained by Holland and Jack Della. Great fight. And uh, I think I'm ready to kick it off. What about you, my brother? Yes, I am, brother. Yes, I am. All right. <laughs> First fight to kick off the prelims. If my internet is working. We got Josephine Nutson. Hey. Go on one on one with Marnik <laughs> Mann. Uh Nutson. Swedish. Six and oh, undefeated. Nickname Thunder. Mm. Going against Marnik Mann. The sword off savage. Six and one. <laughs> fighting out of Montana. This fight is a uh, Frankenstein of a fight because Lucinda was supposed to be fighting. You got no, you, Lucinda was supposed to be the original opponent. Yeah. She was supposed to be the original opponent. She ended up falling out. They ended up signing Nutson, who for some reason didn't deserve a contract on uh, the contender series. Which is crazy. And now they ended up as an opponent picking up man who got, who lost in the contender series. So this is pretty much a contender series fight on a fight night. Uh, yeah. Brief, yeah. Rough. Uh, the lean, the pick is going to be Nutson. Reason for that is because she's Swedish. She trains in Sweden with... Uh, <laughs> at All Stars. At All Stars with uh, Gustafsson and uh, Chemayev. She's got. She's a prolific kickboxer. K1, Muay Thai champion. Very good striking. A little low output. I guess I kind of agree with Dana White on that. But, I mean, she should have been signed regardless. Um, Marnik Mann, best known for getting a head kick by Bruno Brazil. I think she's okay. She got dog in her. But... More, more or less, this fight is probably just going to go to distance. And the finishing upside's on the Nutson side. So at the end of the day, I think Nutson's going to nut on men. <laughs> She's going to bust a nut on men. That's what's going to happen. Josephine's going... I had a better joke in my head, but it kind of just got all convoluted. Because her name is Nutson. And Marnik's last name is Man. <laughs> so... Nutson's winning. <laughs> Who you got, brother? Um, Knutson. I think it's Knutson. Um, Knutson should win this fight. She's the better all-around fighter. Um, she should have got signed right off of Dana White's contender series. I'm not quite sure why he was not impressed. I guess because she didn't finish her opponent. But um, that that fight it was game as hell. Man is game as hell. I'm not sure about the stoppage here. And I'm not going to bet Knutson at minus 550. I do think she's a parlay piece. If you are going to build a very chalky... Um, four leg or three leg, but what I will say is that um, man is probably gonna get you know she's gonna get hit with the salt off in this fight. She's gonna get she's gonna get her ass whooped. Um, I don't know if she gets stopped because Knutson is not a prolific stopper, but um, and I guess you know, but like see how what her mentality is considering she didn't get signed the first time because she didn't finish the girl. She might go and stop this girl. And I think this is a girl she probably could stop. So not sure I'm going to bet it, but I'm definitely probably going to find a way to bet Josephine here. And um, yeah, she's the lean. Got to figure out how I'm going to bet it. All right. Next fight we got on the prelims. We got Charlie Campbell going one-on-one -on -one with Alex Reyes. The cannibal, Charlie Campbell, 7-2, fighting out of New York. Sarah Longo guy, I think, 28 years old, going against Alex the Executioner Reyes, 36 years old, fighting out of Victoriaville, California, 13 and 3 overall. This fight is uh, very strange. 
uh, only because I forgot Alex Reyes is on the roster. This man has been gone for six years. Who? That's, I, that's what I thought. I don't know. <laughs> so this guy is the brother of Dominic Reyes. This guy. Yeah, go ahead. Who? Just Horrible fighter. <laughs> <laughs> the brother of Dom Reyes. The <laughs> older brother of Dom Reyes. This guy's last fight was against Mike Perry. Platinum Mike Perry. Where he uh, fought him up a weight class and got kneed right in the face. And knocked out. Put to sleep. So apparently for Alex Reyes here, when he was preparing for his next fight, which was scheduled to be against Nazrak Haparax, if I remember correctly, that was in 2018. He was undergoing some kind of a stem cell treatment therapy because, you know, he's been uh, experiencing a lot of pain. He's trying to get off the painkillers and shit like that. Ended up getting a permanent infectious disease in his back. In his bones. And uh, has been recovering from that ever since. At one point, my man couldn't even walk. That's crazy. Yeah, most stories, they'll say, oh, yeah, well, you're not going to walk again or fight again. Like this guy, like, you know, a lot of fighters will exaggerate that. This guy is not. Like, he legitimately could not walk for ex- an extended amount of time. Um, I th- He recently got cleared in 2023. They wanted to... Match him up against uh, Trevor Peak. That fell through. He was supposed to fight Natan Levy this card. That fell through. In comes the debuting Charlie Campbell. Charlie Campbell, if you guys remember him, the last time we seen him anywhere in the UFC was on the Contender Series when he got flatlined by Chris Duncan. He was winning that fight until he wasn't. Uh, I like Campbell here. I like the cannibal. Uh, I think his striking is pretty solid. I think he's got a, I think he's pretty good. He's got a, he's pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Hits hard. Got solid leg kicks. Don't know too much about his grappling. When I seen him get taken down, it was mostly because of like him doing some stupid spinning shit and then getting his back taken or he'll throw like a, a, a naked leg kick and end up getting his leg taken and then taken down. And I think Dom Reyes, his strategy is going to want to... Uh, I mean, he can strike, but I think he's better on the ground. I think if the fight goes to the ground, he's got the advantage. That being said, I don't know if I can count on a man who's missed about six years of fighting, battling life-threatening infections. I don't know if I can trust... I can't... I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to lean Campbell here, and he probably knocks out Reyes in the in under round and a half. That's the way I'm feeling. Agreed. Agreed. I, I think um I think Charlie Campbell, Campbell's chicken noodle soup, um, is gonna <laughs> I think he's gonna get this boy to work. You know, and um I felt bad for this guy, man. Um I, I you know, the the amount of shit that he's had to tolerate in the last couple of years. But here's the thing, guys, and it's it I'm fading him for these reasons. He's been out for six years. He went. He didn't. He wasn't like a twenty-two-year-old that's now twenty-eight. He's a thir- he was a he's a thirty-year-old that's now thirty-six, dealing with a spine issue that literally debilitated him to the point where he couldn't work walk. Yep. And now he's coming back against a guy who can crack, is younger than him, bigger than him, and on top of that, how much was he really actually training during that time? Yeah, and even 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 if he was training, like we'll say for like the past couple months, how much pain was he in? What is he dealing with? What are his, what are his, you know, what is he essentially enduring every practice? Does it feel like a car wreck? Does it feel like two car wrecks? You know, like and the thing is, just his ability to recover, considering he's a, now a thirty six year old man, and it just doesn't like at the end of the day, it just doesn't equate to actual mat time, like no. actual ring time. No, you know what I'm saying like he could. He could feel okay, you know, maybe with a decent training camp, this and that. But at the end of the day, like, it's been six years since he's actually been in an actual fight. So, I mean, I mean, I could see, a, I could kind of see a path to victory for him here. Like I said, because I think if it does go to the ground, I think I got a, I got a gut feeling he's got the better jujitsu. I agree. And probably could find a sub somewhere around there. 
But Campbell's defense is actually not bad. It's not it's not great, but it's not terrible. Not too many people have really tried to take him down, but from one the like I said, the people who tried to, you know, it he's it's it's withstand is withstood the test of time. So it's like Correct. And his and just his footwork. He's got he's a very funky striker. So is Alex Reyes too, by the way. He's very funky, has good power, but I think this guy's a bigger version of him on the feet. He's just a bigger, stronger, younger version of him. So, and, and I just don't think Alex's chin is going to hold up to anything that yeah. Campbell throws at him. You can to be you honest. can do a whole bunch of shit in training, exactly. But when it comes fight time, you take that first leg kick, you take that first punch to the jaw. Then we'll see how you're really going to react. Yeah, I like um I like Campbell's chicken noodle soup here. Um, he's probably going to knock him on the first round. All right, next fight we have on the prelims. This probably should be way higher in the card. In my opinion, we got Tracy Cortez going against Jasmine Jazz Divisius. Cortez, 10 and 1, fighting out of Scottsdale, Arizona, 29 years old. Viva Mexico, representing for Noche de UFC. Fighting Jasmine Jazz Divisius, 9 and 2, hailing from Canada, 34 years old, representing Oh, Canada. <laughs> so we got like a. A north of the border fighting south of the border. <laughs> you know, it's... And they're within the borders. That's bars. Uh, this fight is actually sick. Listen, I'm trying to, you know. That was a cool joke, I thought. <laughs> anyway, this fight uh, should be a pick em. It is a pick em, it Pretty should, much. Is it? Yeah, Tracy's line is going up a little bit, but it was pretty much a pick em about a couple of hours ago. She's now minus 122. I think these girls pretty much do the exact same thing, more or less. I think Cortez probably got the wrestling edge. I would say Jasmine's probably got the grappling edge. When it comes to striking, I think Jasmine has got more activity and probably is a little more comfortable striking, whereas Tracy, I think, hits harder. Between the two, uh, it's like splitting hairs here, trying to find like minor differences here and there. Jasmine is the bigger girl, and I think she's got the longer reach. Uh, Tracy, I think, has more experience fighting at bantamweight. Um, but I mean, they're both not big girls, but like you know, Tra- Tracy's actually kind of okay for the size of flyweight. J-J, J-J, um, Jasmine, Jasmine is, is, is big. She's, she's pretty big, big, but she's not super big. Like, yeah. Um, this is tough. I think gun to the head. I gotta go maybe Cortez, but some there's something about Jasmine. She's she's. I mean, they both got dog, and she's been more active. Tracy hasn't fought in a while. She's got some you know outside issues going on too, which kind of like delayed her last fight. I mean, maybe I just wait until uh, weigh-ins, yeah. see how they look facing off. Maybe uh, media day, see how they're talking, where they meant, where the mental, particularly Tracy, where her mentality is at. This could be dog or pass. I agree. I'm gonna lean Tracy because she. I think she's got the wrestling edge, but I mean. I, I don't be surprised if you see a bet for me on Jasmine, maybe, if, depending on the number. So, I agree. Dog or pass. Tracy, I think I'm going to give it a slight edge, but in terms of betting, I think you just take the dog here. Whichever the dog ends up, because the line could flip, you know, either way. If Tracy's the dog, take the dog. Jasmine the dog, you take the dog. But just take who you like. The line's close enough. What about you? Um, I like I like the dog shot here. <laughs> And I like the dog shot for a couple of reasons. Um, I think their wrestling is actually a little bit closer than people want to give it credit for. And the reason being is because Tracy Cortez in her last contest against Melissa Gatto, she took her down, but that's because Melissa doesn't mind being on her back. She also likes to jump guillotine a lot. Jasmine is going to be a much tougher test for her to take down because her and ja- Jasmine and Melissa are about the same size. Melissa might be a little bigger. But Jasmine's definitely much more technical in the wrestling exchanges. And I think she is the better grappler here. Um, Tracy does make a little bit of, you know, some silly errors. Every fight she's in an arm bar or being threatened to be subbed in an arm bar. 
Um, I don't think Jasmine's even going to have to go that far because I think she's going to be able to big sister her a little bit and out volume her. And she also knows how to fight big and essentially work behind her jab. She's also made significant improvements, in my opinion, in her game. And I think she's kind of figuring out and rounding out who she is as a fighter. And um, yeah, I mean, I could see Tracy moving around like Natalia Silva did against her. But at the same time, like Tracy doesn't have the footwork, the elusiveness, the light footedness or the counter punching to really do that to Jasmine, in my opinion. Plus, uh, Tracy is a little bit of low volume, right? I'd say she's lower. I mean, their, their striking output is more or less the same when it comes statistically. But when you look a little deeper into it. I mean, I think it's a little skewed because she had one match where she had like, uh, you know, an abnormal amount of volume. Right. I, th I think personally, I think she's going to be the more low volume side. Yeah. When Jasmine, I think, you know, like I said, I think she's just the she's more comfortable striking. And I like that she uh, she sticks her jab out a lot. You know, she does. She knows how to use her length. And I could see that. I could see that presenting problems for Tracy yeah. in terms of like, you know, trying to get in. When she's got to keep eating a jab to the face. Yeah, I would say. And the thing is, if you look at Jasmine's last fight where she fought Miranda Maverick, I don't think Miranda Maverick is Tracy Cortez. I think Tracy's better. But Jasmine kind of dog walked Miranda in that fight, in my opinion. I thought like she had her beat everywhere. And I have a feeling it's kind of kind of looked the same, especially since Tracy's having some of these issues off, you know, out of the octagon. I think it's probably as it pertains to Brian Ortega, but. You know, that's a different conversation for a different day. I hey mean, we don't know. We don't know. But yeah, that's a little messy, you know what I'm saying? A little but, messy, you know. but, you know. But what I will say is I think ja I think this fight is definitely dog or pass. If Tracy goes into dog money, I'm going to take her. But I just see more money coming in on her. And I think Jasmine is live. Live as hell. So, uh, give me... I'm going to just... Yeah, I'm going to lean. And I think I'm going to bet Jasmine. I'm going to lean for sure, Jasmine. Not Let me not commit to the bet. I'm, I feel pretty confident I'm going to commit to the bet, but... We'll, we'll wait for that come closer to the fight day. I want to see the media. I want to see the face-offs. I want to see if these girls make weight properly because Jasmine is big for the weight class. If she struggles with weight, I'm definitely going to go Cortez here. So give me Jasmine. All right, next fight we got on the prelims. We got Edgar Chares going one-on-one -on -one with Daniel Lacerda. The Santos, he's got like three different names. Daniel Lacerda is what they got, got him listed. People gonna bleed, it's gonna get cut open, and somebody might die. And currently my internet is down, so I can't give you the statisticals, but nope, it's back. <laughs> Let's go. Edgar Chavez, the pit bull, 10 and 5, fighting out of Mexico, hailing from Mexico, 27 years old, going against Miojo. Miojo. I think that's how you say it. Daniel Lacerda, 11 and 5. Fighting out of Brazil, hailing from Brazil, 27 years old. Daniel Lacerda is currently on a four-fight losing streak. <laughs> I think his list, I, th I feel like his De Silva contract expired, and he, he disguised himself with a, like a mustache or something and came into Dana White's office and said, I am the brother of De Silva. I am Lacerda. This is number one bullshit. And I think he got another three-fight extension here. Because I don't know. I mean, I get why he's not cut. He's a, he's an exciting fighter. He's great for one round. But four fight in a row, he's the, he he hasn't won. <laughs> if, ladies and gentlemen, if fight for five minutes, he'd be a world champion. Yes, that's how good he is in the first <laughs> round. Like, but they're not five minutes; they're fifteen at minimum, and then twenty five for championship fights. So, um, he's going one on one here with uh, Mexico's own. Mm. The pit bull, Edgar Chavez, and Chavez uh, hasn't got a win in the UFC yet. On the contender series, lost a close fight to Clayton Carpenter. Then they brought him in because they needed a warm body for Tatsuro Tyra. And they gave him all he could handle. And uh, actually made that a very competitive fight. I bet Tatsuro by sub there, and it ended up going to distance. And it even got a little scary because even in the third round, Edgar had him in uh, a Monte uh, Guillotine. Yeah. Deep, R too. Right at the end of the third. And I was like, oh, man. Yeah. 
I'm gonna lean Edgar here. I think Edgar's the side. He's probably way too big of a favorite. Minus 265. He's got a chin. He's got hands. He's not going to get knocked out. So we can rule that out. I think Lacerda's only path to victory here is by sub. And it's probably going to have to be first round because, as we stated before, Lacerda has no cardio after five minutes. The lean is Edgar. The pick is Edgar. Don't have a bet on this fight. It, it could be another dog or pass, to be honest. If you're going to pick Lacerda, maybe go Lacerda by sub, because I think that's his only path to victory. And then Lacerda sub first round. But, yeah, I like Charez here, but no bet at the moment. Yeah, Ch- I like Charez here, too, and I like him by second round stoppage. Because I think the first round's going to be extremely competitive. Charez doesn't have, like, nuclear power in his hand, so I think he's going to have to survive a little bit of a storm. And then Lacerda is going to blow his load in the first round, Ayo. And then after that, Chara is going to blow his load on him. (laughs) That's what's going to happen. I said what I said. Okay. And um, yeah, I think um, I think Chara gets him out of the second round. Second, you could say third. I I just don't see Lacerda's defense, defensive grappling, and defense in the second round historically is terrible. And by the way, statistically, just so you guys know, he's never seen a third round. So, hard for me to bet him to get finished in the third round. I think he gets finished in the second. I think Chires puts it on him for all the reasons you listed. Um, Chires by execution in the second round. And, you know, is what's homeboy's name? Lucerta, Dos Santos, whatever. Horrible fighter. Horrible fighter. And after the second round. After the first round, I mean. All right, next fight we have on the prelims. We got Roman Kapilov going one-on-one with Josh Fremd. Kapilov, 11-2, fighting out of Russia, hailing from Russia, 32 years old, going against Josh Fremd. 11-4, fighting out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 29 years old. This fight is another fight where it was kind of just Frankenstein together. Kapilov came in for Hernandez, who was supposed to be fighting Chris Curtis. Then Curtis fell out, so Fremd came in, and now they're fighting each other. I don't know. It's, it's some craziness like that. These both these guys weren't supposed to be on the card. These both these guys literally just fought a couple months ago. But the UFC said, I mean, fuck it. We already signed these guys, so let's just put them together and let them bang. Uh, I like Kapilov here. I'm not the biggest Josh Friend fan. Kapilov, I mean, I tried betting against him his last fight against uh Ribeiro. Ribeiro. Had his moment, that got stopped. Had his moment, but you know, head kick from hell. Kapilov has been getting better. Like, the two big stinks that I had about Kapilov were his wrestling defense and his lack of output. And I think he shored up both of those. I agree. I know he's been training in uh, Dagestan. So that wrestling is, you know, that defensive wrestling at least is looking pretty solid. And every fight he's had since, I think, the Dariah fight, increasing his output. I, even if he increased his output in the Dariah fight, I think he would have won that, to be honest. But... And he's been finishing dudes. Uh, Josh Frem, his last fight against Pickett. And yeah. Where he kind of looked like he was struggling a little bit. I mean, he won it. Not the most convincing way. It was kind of a boring fight. The fight before that, he fought uh, Cedricus Dumas. And uh, he did what he had to do. Did what he had to do against that fight, against that guy. But like, you that know. That Jamie Pickett fight stained us. Yeah, it's Josh Fremd is I don't know, man. I he's big. He's like six four. He's super big for the division. He's got decent hands. He's got okay grappling. I I think he is like UFC caliber, but I just think Roman Kapilov is just on another level. I agree. Or he's at least ascending to the next level. And it's just hard for me to pick against Kapilov at at, at this point of his career. So I'm leaning Kapilov. Probably too big to bet. Like, I think this this card in general, Noche de UFC, is chalky as hell. Chalky. I don't think there's too many dogs here. I think most of the most of the fighters I like are juiced. Juiced. Yeah. Juiced. Juiced. Yeah, but, minus 375 for Kapilov. Yeah. I like Kapilov here. Too big to bet. Don't really got to bet. But that's my lean. 
that's my pick. What about you? Kapilov, um, for all the reasons you listed, he's definitely a parlay piece in my opinion. Um, I just don't trust, I don't trust Josh Fram's chin in this fight against a guy who has stepped up his output and has gotten better with his precision. And he's kind of shirt up his wrestling D because he's not really too good off his back. That was one of the few, the few criticisms he had when he initially started in the UFC. He shirt that up. He kind of just dictates the fights and the pace of the fights. I just don't know how Josh Fram is going to be able to deal with his pacing, his distance management, his setups, and um, his ability to find your chin. And Josh Fram, yeah, he can make it in the wrestling, but Josh Fram is not like a prolific wrestler. He struggled getting lesser opponents down. So, Kapilov and Kapilov probably by knockout. All right, next fight we got here on the prelims. We got Lupita Godinez. Lupi Godinez going one on one with Elise Reed. Godinez, 10 and 3, hailing from Mexico, fighting out of Canada, 30 years old. Going one on one with Elise Reed, fighting out of Jersey, Princeton, Jersey to be exact. 30 years old, 7 and 3 overall. I like I like Godinez here, just straight to the point. Uh, if she wrestles here, she's going to look minus a thousand. At least Reed cannot defend a takedown. And when she's on her back, she does not know what to do. Uh, what worries me just a little bit here is Goudinez has kind of been uh, slowly uh, tapering off her wrestling for some reason. Maybe it's just the uh, the matchup or styles of opponents. I know the Cavillo fight. I understand that. Yeah, a lot of people didn't understand that. And I, I think I think Cynthia's grappling is super underrated. I think she's a very good wrestler. And then the Angela Hill fight, apparently she was hurt going into that fight. So I you know, I I'll you know, I'll I'll give her that excuse. That's fine. She should have wrestled there, but you know, she couldn't apparently, so that's cool. And then I think she I think her last fight was against the Cody, where she, you know, brought back some of the wrestling. Yep. I like Goudinez here. I think on the feet, it's kind of 50-50. At least Reed has got hands. I give her that. I like her boxing. I think she's slick. She, you know, she's got decent movement, solid jab. She pumps the jab like two or three times. Goudinez, nothing to sneeze at, on the, on, at the striking, though, because I think her striking is pretty solid, and she might be the harder hitter of the two. I agree. But like I said, if it gets to the ground, minus a million. Yeah. Goudinez should have her wrapped up present. Present style. Been packing them up. Been packed them up. So, I like Goudinez here. Goudinez, I don't know if she finishes at least three. She probably could finish at least three, to be honest. Maybe Goudinez by sub is sneaky. I feel like this fight is unbettable in a lot of ways. I mean, it is a little bit. Yeah, because, like, do you really want her as your parlay piece? Like, now, do you really, can you trust her to stop her? Not really. And can you trust her to even wrestle in this fight? I think you can. I think you bit. can a little bit. She'll yeah. mix it in. She should she is the rightful favorite, but minus four forty? I don't know, man. That's insane. I don't even I don't even want to know what the rest of her lines are. I think this is just a play the value play. So if whatever her submission is, play it. Um whatever her knockout is, play it, and then you, you let it run from there. But I think just to bet her, obviously you can't bet her straight. You can't bet her by knockout. I mean you can't bet her by um I don't I don't want her in a parlay. She should win this fight, there's no question, but do you trust her and how? You yeah. know, so, yeah, I think you find value here and you play it. Um, the, the lines ain't open yet, so we can't give you any, but, you know, follow us on all social media platforms as usual. <laughs> Plug I mean, Kugo got next, you know what I'm saying? Boogie, Kuhuna, you mm -hmm. feel me? I mean, so, and, and if you believe in patterns, I mean, she lost against Eubanks, but that's that was a weight class up. That, you know, she didn't belong there. No, she didn't. But she got, you know, she got bumped up. Yeah. Like, she got messed up pretty bad in that one. Sarge so, should be fighting at 45. Yeah. Let's just keep it 100. Uh, beat Corey McKenna. But you can argue if Corey McKenna just would have fucking wrestled. Yeah. Like earlier, because she she won that third round. She could have beat at least Reed there. But, Tough question. You know, lost to Sam Hughes, who I've been kind of sleeping on a little bit. I didn't really like Sam Hughes initially, but... Her cardio is crazy. Man, she got cardio. She's tough, and she's a builder, and she can wrestle her ass off. And, you know, she's got she got balls, man. That girl, she girl's tough. Tough. Uh, beat Melissa Martinez. Eh, yeah, whatever. Lost to Lou McBoomy. Win-loss, 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 win-loss here. Yeah, win-loss. And losing to Luma is not 
terrible. I think Luma is actually good, but she lost by sub to Luma, which and, is and, not a good look. And Luma is a, a tie boxing specialist. Yeah. Like, not a good look. Beat Jin Yu Frey. Jin Yu Frey's washed, in my opinion. Yeah, she's a little. Yeah. She did what she had to do there. But now she's, you know, she's supposed to fight Cynthia. She's supposed to fight Lucindo. Those both fell out. Now she's fighting Loopy. I like Loopy here. I like Loopy as well. All right. Now to kick off the main card. We got Fernando Padilla going one-on-one with Kyle Nelson. El Valiente. Fernando Padilla. 15 and 4. Fighting out of Chihuahua, Mexico. Hailing from Mexico, 26 years old, going against the monster, Kyle Nelson. Fighting out of Huntsville, Ontario, Canada. 32 years old, 14, 5, and 1 overall. Uh, this fight is kind of sneaky. This this fight is, because uh, I'm not too high on Padija, but I'm also not too high on Kyle Nelson. I'm going to lean Padija here. Slightly. He's the younger guy. I think he's got the he's got the way better hands. If this stays standing, I think Padilla boxes Kyle Nelson. Look, the thing is, Kyle Nelson's got the Kyle Nelson's got some grappling on him. Nelson's gonna Nelson you. No, I mean like how John Fitch, John Fitch is gonna fit you. He's gonna Nelson you. Nelson, uh, <laughs> like I wanted to fade this guy before. I bet I think Builder against him. Oh, terrible. And Kyle Nixon. Nelson, and he ended up fixing, like, the, the main hole in his game. Well, not the main hole, but one of the main holes, which was his cardio. He was able to pace himself against in that builder fight. They get tired towards the end, though. They get tired, but did enough to win. He was also at home in Canada, so he probably felt, like, super, um, he probably saw, he probably felt that pride going through him, which motivated him for the camp. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too mad at a Kyle Nelson dog shot here. I'm, again, I don't like I don't like this fighter. I don't like either fighter to be honest. But I mean, I do see a path of vic- uh, a clear path to victory here with Kyle Nelson because of the grappling. Woke up is it a wrestling? Uh, Padilla is easy to take down, and Padilla kind of likes to play off his back a little bit because I mean he's a big, long, lanky guy, and he likes to you know do all that rubber guard shit and you know uh, you know try to catch dudes on a submission. I think Kyle Nelson is uh he's a he's a he's a for for everything that he is, he's a he's a smart veteran fighter here. Uh it's probably this is a step up for Padija. I'm gonna pick Padija, but I think this might be dog or pass, maybe. I don't know. It's just it's just laying money on Kyle Nelson. I don't feel too hot about it either because I'm just not a fan of Kyle Nelson, but the wrestling path to victory is there. I agree. Um I just you just gotta hope Kyle Nelson don't get chin checked first, because Padilla hits. Yeah, his boxing is slick. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like I um, I'm with you on everything you said. These are two big ass one forty fivers, one six one. The other one's five eleven. Um, to all your points, I agree. Don't know how I'm gonna bet this. It might be just a complete pass for me because I'm definitely not high in either one of these two either. Um. As well, either one of these two as well. And, um, <laughs> but my lean is Padilla. Padilla probably knocks him out. I'll go that far. All right, next fight we got on the card here is at lightweight. We got Daniel Zell Huber going one on one with Christos Giagos, the golden boy, Zell Huber, 13 and one, hailing from Mexico, fighting out of Mexico, 24 years old, going one on one with the Spartan, Christos Giagos. 20 and 10 overall. Hawthorne, California, fighting out of 35 years old, the age. This is another fight where I'm leaning. I, I think Zell Huber is the side. A li- I, I feel a little better about this fight than I did against, uh, than I did with the, the Padilla fight. Uh, I think Zell Huber is the goods. The only thing that gives me a little pause on Zell Huber, but I guess not so much pause. I, mean, I just. The the, the 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 fucking Trey Ogden fight is what sticks out to me. Um, I kind of chalked that up to UFC jitters. UFC debut jitters. He should have beat that guy. If he fought him again, he fuck him up. But his last fight against Venata, extremely impressive. He and he Venata, him. Venata was you know he ain't nothing to sneeze at. Venata's pretty. He's a solid veteran. Uh, Giagos here. 
I mean, his path to victory, like oh, like the other guy, the previous fight, the wrestling. I'm a little more confident in Zell Huber getting the win here. I think Giagos is not. I mean, his last win was against the. Uh, What's that guy's name? Some old dude. <laughs> Fighting a I bet right it too. Ricky Glenn. Yep. Ricky Glenn. Left hook. Slept him. Ricky Glenn shot. Left hook is the best takedown defense, baby. <laughs> According to the great Michael Bisping. <laughs> Put you on your fucking ass. I mean, Giagos, I mean, he he's lost to killers. Good people. Tiago Moises, Armin Sarukian, Drakkar Close, Charles really? Oliveira. Yeah. Josh Emmett, Chris Wade, Gilbert Burns. He's lost. The, so, I mean, again, is Zell Huber any one of these guys? I don't know. Not yet. He could be. Not yet. I'm going to lean not with the most confidence. I think he's going to be my pick. Don't have a bet on this fight. But uh, Zell Huber, I like him. I think he should get it done. But I don't know. Not. I'm not too confident in it, so. I agree. Um, I agree with everything you said. And for the reasons being, because Zell Huber throws a ton of volume, has a granite chin. Um, well, inside a war, definitely understands distance management a little better than Giagos. Um, Giagos, like you said, has a clear path to victory with the wrestling, but he has to take down a very tall, lanky opponent. And I think wrestling tall people is the worst thing on the planet because when you pick them up, it feels like they never leave the floor. Um, for those reasons... I, I like Zell Huber here. Um, I think the volume is going to overwhelm Giagos. And Giagos is not active enough for me, to be honest. Like, you know, he that, before that last fight, he wasn't active. And now he's kind of taking some time off, too. So, And he's older, 30 fights in. Zell Huber's the younger, fresher killer on the uh, Noche, the UFC card. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I just think he gets it done. Um, somehow, somewhere he gets it done, even though there is a clear path for victory for Chris. Christos Iagos. I don't have a fight, but Zell Huber is the lame. All right, next fight we got the featured bout in Bantamweight. Men's Bantamweight. Raul Rosas Jr. El Nino Problema. Proble oh my God, I butchered that. Problema. Problema. I'm Spanish, man. What am Puerto Rican? What am I doing? <laughs> Going one-on-one -on -one with Terrence Mitchell. Tear Bear. That's his nickname. Uh, Rosas, 7-1. Santa Rosa, California. 18 years old. Terrence Mitchell, the Terror Bear, 14 and 3. Anchorage, Alaska, 33 years old. Uh, featured bout. They're trying to get uh, Rosas here another win. Underestimated my boy C Rod, who was supposed to be on this card, actually. I don't know who he was supposed to be fighting, but he ended up pulling out. Yeah, C Rod's underrated. We made money off of that shit. Yeah. So I, I, we call it that because. I think people are just slip, sleeping on Chris Rodriguez. His skill, he's he's a skilled fighter. I think uh, I think the issue was, was I think they were watching C-Rod and they seen him get taken down by, uh, yeah, Joshua Weems. And they were like, okay. Yeah. You know? And by the way, Raul did have his back for the first round, but uh, C-Rod's uh, take that like grappling defense is underrated. He's just underrated as an, a fighter entirely. He's a very good fighter. Yeah, and that's nothing. Is I mean, that's no disrespect to Rosas. I think Rosas is a uh, he's yeah he's good. Yeah, he's for an eighteen year old kid. Yeah, I think he might be nineteen now. He's he's a good fighter. His grappling is a one, but for like, one round. Let's yeah. just well, I mean, one round. I, I think if he just paces him, so he's still young. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I think he's got potential, man. He's just got to work on his hands and his pacing. I agree. And I I think you know the sky's the limit for this boy. Yeah. But um, I mean, again, I think they're trying to get him a win here. Terrence Mitchell here, Alaska FC. The only successful fighter from Alaska FC is uh, Chad, Jared Cannonier. Jared, Jared Cannonier. All these other guys from Alaska suck. <laughs> Seriously, this guy, Cameron Simon took him down and was able to drown him. And I'm not too high on Cameron Simon. Actually, I think that's a... Who uh, C. Rod was supposed to fight on, on this card? As he was supposed to fight Simon. Simon, and I would have faded him. Ooh, I would have faded that Simon. That would have been easy money, boy. Yeah, but uh, Raul yeah. Raul Rosas. Yeah, not too much to say here. I think Rosas wins probably, probably first, first round. round submission. 
more, more than likely. Maybe some ground and pound, but who knows? I think first round submission for Rosas here. It's a future fight. They're trying to give the kid the rub again, put him back on the, you know, on the main stage. I ain't really got too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. I agree. First round sub. Um, don't know if I'm going to bet it because I don't trust Raul's ga- gas tank. And sub- and he hasn't shown me he has the best fight IQ considering that is a big gaping hole in this game. But I know he has been doing the work on the side to his body and, you know, we'll see. But I do I think he's a plausible bet? Sure. But he's definitely a lean if you're going to bet him first round sub. For sure. That, I think that's the only way you can bet him because you're not taking him at minus 700. You can't even parlay that. So, Raul Rosas, first round sub. Don't know if I'm going to bet it. All right, co-main event. We got Kevin Holland, the trailblazer. The trail I'm talking too fast. Mm, too fast. Going one-on-one with Jack Della Mandalina. People going to bleed. It's going to get cut open and somebody might die. The trailblazer, 25 and 9. Fort Worth, Texas, 30 years old. Jack Della, 15 and 2. Perth, Western Australia, 27 years old. This Coleman event's a banger. I like Jack Della. That's that's my lean. I missed him at the dog money, the opening money. He was like plus 110, plus 100 when it first opened. Yep. Ooh, that would have been nice. But I still like him here. He gives up... Height, he gives up reach, possibly even power. I mean, because Kevin Holland, you know, fights all the way up at 85. 85 and knocks out dudes up there. So I'm a little worried for Jack because Jack kind of likes to, you know, <laughs> he likes to brawl. He likes to trade. He likes to dump. And Kevin Holland, again, you know, not the, uh, Sharpest tool in the box. You know what I'm saying? He's got the, he's got a clear path to victory here if he just grappled Jack. He's not going to grapple Jack. I don't believe it. I don't believe him. He needs more people. Show me. As uh, the great Jay-Z said. Hugo once said to me, you got to show them. Show them. Show me. I don't believe you. He does not have the grappling. He won't grapple Jack here. But this fight's going to be crazy. Nice back and forth. Jack Slicker Boxer. I think this probably f- goes to decision. Maybe? I agree. I would say so. But I'm going to lean Jack here. Like I said, I mean, if it, like I said, Kevin Holland wrestled, easy money. He's not going to wrestle him. I am still worried about the power, especially in the exchanges, because Jack's got to get in. Kevin does do a good job at uh, using his length. Like to keep people out. So there's going to be that in between, you know, but I think Jack's got the footwork to really get in there. So I like Jack here to go to the decision and win over Kevin Holland. What about you? Fight of the night for sure. I wish there was a bet on that. And um, I like Jack to go to distance with this as well. I'm, I'm just choosing Jack because he is the more slicker boxer. He understands distance better and you know, you could say all oh, the length and the reach, but Randy Brown, he fought and he flatlined him and then subbed him, which I hate him for because I bet him to knock him out and he wanted up <laughs> jumping on his neck. The club and sub like special. Like fucking Carlos Solberg this weekend. <laughs> These fucking Australians, man. They're killing me. Uh, they're Holy shit. They're dug you out, boy. Bet him yeah, straight. Bet him straight. But yeah, I, I like Jack. I like Jack at this line. However, if you do want to lean Kevin as a dogger pass here, I'm not terribly mad at it just because of the length, the dimensions, the power. And he has knocked out technical strikers like Santiago Ponzinibbio. And Jack's going to put, I mean, not Jack. Um, and Kevin's going to put the the volume up too. It's not like he, yeah. he, ain't, he ain't afraid to throw those hands, man. Correct. He is not afraid to throw hands. And yeah. I feel like the, the dirtier the fight gets, the better he gets. The better he gets, and probably the better for him in general, because that Jack kind of likes to. Jack's gonna want this fight to be clean, you know. I feel like. So if it does get dirty, I mean, I mean, Kevin Holland could, uh, you know, he could rock Jack, he could yeah. rock him, and yeah. you know, put him on skates for a little bit. I agree, and here's what I will say too: If you like Kevin, I'm not mad at it for the simple fact that I think Jack is doing a little bit of a quick turnaround after that war he had in his last fight so i'm a little skeptical i might change my mind as this this week goes he did cut weight twice within a week back to back for that previous contest 
But that guy was last minute notice. That guy came with the heat. Jack should have stopped him, didn't stop him. Almost got stopped himself in the fight. Got hit a couple of times with some clean shots. Um, I like Jack here. I'm not I think you I think I'm gonna bet him, but I'm gonna wait a little later in the week before I can commit because I think I think there is a chance Kevin can get it done. You do make a good point. I didn't I, I did forget about the quick turnaround. So no, that, I don't like it. That does kind of worry me a little bit, but Yeah, I mean, the lean he, is Jack. He took damage in that fight, but it was more like I, I feel like Jack just wasn't ready for the grappling the, and the wrestling. Yeah, and and then that guy's head was made out of literal steel. That that dude's melon, he was taking shots. Yeah, like with, with Kevin, he's not gonna have to worry about the wrestling, which no. doesn't leave him open for clean punches and kicks. So now I do think Kevin can take advantage because say if he does rock Jack on yeah. his feet and Jack, you know, decides to shoot on him or tries to clinch him. That's that's where the Holland grappling comes into effect because gra- Holland doesn't initiate grappling or initiate wrestling, but he's an opportunistic kind of fighter. If it's there and you're going to give it to him, he'll take it. So if Jack, you know, gets rocked for whatever reason and decides to, you know, close the distance by trying to, you know, clinch him or something like that, I, I could see a, uh, a standing guillotine or something crazy like that on Jack. Yeah. I can see it. And I, I do think Jack does get into dog fights a lot. Yeah. You know, so I love this fight. I, I mean, it, it's almost... Oh, it's a great fight. It's a great fight. I, I almost don't know. I'm not quite... I like Jack as the lean, but I'm not sure I'm going to bet him. Because if like this, say if this Kevin Holland line gets up to like plus 150, 180... Oh, you got to take it. You got to take you it. take a little stab on it. You got to yeah. take it. You got to take it. Because I don't know if there's value on Jack... Past minus 155, which he's at right now. So either I'm going to make a quick decision or I'm going to take Kevin at dog money. So, yeah, give me Jack Delano via decision. All right, now the main event, UFC Flightweight Championship for the women, 125. We got Alex, Alex, Alexa Grasso, don't disrespect, (laughs) going one-on-one with Valentina Shevchenko. Grasso, 16 and 3, the champion, hailing from Mexico, fighting out of Guadalajara, Mexico, 30 years old. The challenger, Shishenko, bullet, 23 and 4, fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. I mean, she said, it actually says she's fighting out of Lima, Peru. But she's hailing from Kajikajik. Yeah, she's all over the place. She fights. She's a she's a martial artist yeah, she, wherever she goes. Yeah, she's a, she's a world traveler for sure. She's a world fighter. She's like Ryu. Yeah. A street fighter. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like she takes a little plane and says, Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and then chased another plane and goes, Brazil. Yeah. And then she fights Blanca. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the rematch. Grasso Shishenko 2. Ooh. I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna let you kick this one off. Um, well, I will say this, guys. Um, and we apologize because we didn't put a tweet out, but I know, I think you did as well. I committed half a unit already to Grasso at plus two hundred. Her line got smashed, so you know I think at this point either you bet the distance, which I like in this fight as well. I like the distance in this fight. I also like if you're not if you're not gonna bet the dog here, you bet Valentina. And I say that because even though she's at minus 170, which is not minus 150 or like minus 140, I think getting someone this great at that line is worth a shot Um, for a lot of reasons. She lost the first round, in my opinion, the first fight. She lost the fourth round cleanly as well, too. And by the way, guys, just tune into that episode. I forgot which one it is. But when they headlined alongside John Jones and Valentina, I think it was the John Jones car, right? Was it the John Jones yeah, card? Yeah, I believe it was. It might have been the John Jones card, yeah. John Jones gone, right? Yeah. Yep. We called Alex, Alexa Grasso to win that fight at plus 600. Easy money. And I pretty much called the fight right down the middle exactly how it was going to go. I said it could be 2-2 heading into the fifth. And before the stoppage in the fourth, that's exactly what it was, what it was looking like. I thought Grasso was winning the fourth. And she had her back and then got the sub in. So she technically won the fourth because she stopped in the fourth. Yeah. And then she won the first and then Valentina won the second and the third. Um, I think this fight, and this is another reason, I took the money early because I knew Alexa's line was going to get smashed. I think you did too. Yeah, it was just one of those 
things. We were just chilling in the middle of the night. Just like, hey, man, look at these lines, bro. And then we just seen 200 on Grasso for the rematch. And I was like, I think we got to take this shot here, bro. Yeah. We got to take this shot. Even though, personally, I do think... Valentina's going to win the fight. I think Shashenko might win this fight. I agree. I do. But if you're going to give me plus 200 on the current champion... Who beat her? And I'm saying put in plus money on a champion. And she's younger. I mean... There's a lot of things. There's a lot. There's you got to take the shot, man. Yeah. You got to take the shot. But now, since the line is flipped... Not flipped, but definitely come down a little bit. I think you got to go Shevchenko if you, you're going to bet this. You have to take Shevchenko at these odds. Yeah. You have to. But what I, what I will say is... Um, and I've been saying this from the beginning. And I think this is absolutely the truth. Alex... Valentin is the stronger grappler... Ale- and I said this the last fight. Alexa is the more technical grappler. And you kind of seen in the last contest. I think Alexa has more adjustments to make for this fight than Valentina does. What are those adjustments, do you think? I think she needs to be a little more patient. I think she needs to pick faint a little more. I think she needs to be aggressive when she's aggressive. And I think she needs to pump the jab a little more. But I told you guys in the first fight, I think Alexa's understanding of distance management is underrated. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about her like Irina Idana not showing up for this fight because I still think Irina on, her, on a good night from Irina, she beats Amanda Nunez. They come from the same camp. They push each other. I also like the game planning from that camp. Um, I think they're going to look at that footage and see what they did wrong and just adjust and be better about it. What this really comes down to, and this is why I kind of want to wait to see if I'm going to put a little more money on Alexa or, and you know, how else I'm going to bet this fight. I want to see how Valentina is talking this week, because if she does not acknowledge that she was not the better, she, she equated what happened to one mistake in the fight. If she does not acknowledge that she was just not the better fighter in the fight, you know, even her, even her longtime teammate, um, Rose Namajunas said it like I think a week or two ago. Literally said it word for word the way I'm saying it. If she does not analyze what she did wrong and understand that she just was not the better fighter that night, she's going to lose this fight. Because I think Alexa is going to come with a better game plan. And I think Alexa is going to be sharper than she was the first fight because she has confidence now after she beat this girl. I wouldn't say she's going to come with a better game plan, but I do think Alexa is going to come with a more fine-tuned game plan. She's going to be it's going to be more defined. Yeah. 100%. Because I, like she she saw where she was weak at, you know? She yeah. saw that she was able to be easily taken down. And uh I think those again, you're right. Those times where she should have committed and just like, you know, cuz I think she's got a really good one too. Yeah. And she connected on Shashenko several times. And there's some times where she kind of like half committed and then I'm getting clipped because, again, Shashenko's a good counter striker. Yeah. If she just commits a little more and is a little more defensive, uh, defensively aware. Yeah. You know, Grasso could, Grasso could pull it out. And then and you notice- know, I, I like the thing that Teddy Atlas said the other day where it's like once you become champion, you kind of automatically just like the confidence boost you become 30 percent better than what you were that's scary and 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 there's a track record people who lose their belts in the immediate rematches the record's not that hot no especially after the age i think of 36 which valentina is teetering on but she has a lot of miles man because she's been fighting since she was she's been fighting forever since she was 15 yeah so, you know, I mean, is this, I mean, in your opinion, is this the, uh, the end of Shashenko? Is this the peak? Is this Shashenko on the downslide or is she just, just peeking out or I think she's peeking out and I think the rest of the division is catching up to her. Cause I still, th- I still think she can beat a lot of these girls. The problem is if she does not wrestle and the thing is too, if you notice, she did try to wrestle Alexa later in that fight. And what happened? She got tired. Yeah. If Alexa makes her work. I think she has a real chance in this fight, which I think is very possible because Alexa has output. Alexa has a granite chin and Alexa um, has cardio for days. Yeah. The girl does not get tired. Valentina was a little tired in that fight and the last fight. And, you know, may, will she come in more motivated for this fight? Sure, man. But and she will. I think she will. But it, you're right. I think media day and like you know if they have a press conference for noche i don't think they will because it's like a fight night which is unfortunate because this is this is a this is a pay-per-view worthy fight but it's going to be pretty interesting just to see her mindset in particular yeah you're right like you know 
Is she still is she is she still harping that that one mistake is what separated her in the fight? Yeah. Like, that, like that's she, alarming. Like she, like she fought a perfect fight, and you know that one little spinning back because it was a spinning back fist she tried to do, right? Correct. Where she ended up getting her back just straight taken. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, it wasn't just that. No, it, it wasn't just the spinning back fist. Because you have to look at the first round. Yeah, and then the thing is too, you know who was talking like that as well? Guess who? Kamaru Usman, his last fight. Another guy who lost his belt at or after thirty six. And then couldn't retain it from a guy. Like, couldn't get it back from a guy. Now you're on enemy territory because you're doing this on um, well, Mexican I mean, Independence Day weekend. If yeah. it was in Mexico, it'd be way more against Valentina. Oh, it'd be way more intense. Um, because I mean, they'd but, be throwing beer at her, bro. But, you me, know? but Mexicans do travel to Vegas, though. They so, do. So, I mean, I guess that was the compromise. Like, hey, listen, we're going to do a pay-per-view. I mean, not a pay-per-view. It's kind of like a pay-per-view. It's, like, it's just like a premium it, fight night. I agree. We're going to do like a premium fight night in Vegas. You're going to headline... It's, it's not in the Apex. It's in the T-Mobile Center. And Mexican independence, I mean, usually boxing does this all the time. And, again, Mexicans travel. And I'm saying when they want to come see their fighters, they come see their fighters. And this card, from top to bottom, loaded with Mexicans. You know? Or just like, I don't know. It's, I, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I just think the rest of the division is catching up to her. Um, we call... Once again, we called Alexa on this podcast at plus 600 because we thought that line was outrageous. On second thought, we should have done that with Sean Strickland last weekend. But the way Sean Strickland won, in my opinion, was more improbable than how Alexa won. Like, that was past the victory for Alexa, in my opinion. I didn't think Sean was going to be able to stand up with Izzy for 25 minutes and outstrike him, yeah, which is yeah. insanity. Yeah. But besides the point, I think Alexa possesses a lot of problems. She presents a lot of problems for Valentina. And the thing is, I would like to see if she offensively wrestles more. That would be very interesting, but I do think she is the better wrestler. Valentina is really good from the body lock position, but if you're not overextending, you're not getting body lock takedown. Yeah. So, and I think Alexa is very good at managing distance. So it did happen the first fight. I think she's going to shore up some things in this fight. She's the younger fighter. You give me plus 200 odds on her. I'm going to take her. Um, and she won the first fight. So she has the confidence boost. She's going to be better. Now the momentum's on her side. The pressure's on Valentina to prove that it wasn't a fluke. And if Valentina is still in the same mindset that that fight was a fluke, she's probably going to lose this fight because you, there's a lot of things you did wrong in that fight. You know. Plus, I expect Alexa to probably come up to a quick start because Valentina is a slow starter. She picks up. But... Who knows? Maybe that's just one of the things that Valentina changes, you know. But it could, if, it could, be, it could be, yeah. but it could be a detriment to her too because I think Alexa probably has the best boxing in the division, arguably, right? She does. Um, Valentina's the better striker, but it, with this right here, the one-two and the check hook. I mean, Sean Strickland just won the fucking championship with a one-two. True. And the thing is, Alexa is capable of slipping and ripping, so I don't know if she's gonna come out more. But, this fight can either be very good. Very crazy or slow and very technical. I was going to say, maybe not with the striking straight out the gate, but I think with the grappling straight out the gate. Yeah, the thing is, or she the, the wrestling. She is trying to take her down. She has to ask, she has to ask herself, can she sustain that for five rounds? Which I don't, you want the, I don't think she can. I mean, to be honest, I mean, if she, I mean, it's, this is, again, this depends if she thinks, uh, if she's washed or not, right? I mean, she's only needs to, she only really needs to secure three rounds, right? She does. And then but, the other two just play it safe, you know? But, but now now here's the thing, too, though. Now, Mexican Independence Day weekend, Alexa Grasso, she's the champion. And some of these judges look at these fights like, okay, to beat the champion, you got to beat the champion. Yeah, which is not the right... I don't think that's the yeah. right way to do things, but that's kind of what happened in the Talia Santos fight in the same building. Talia won that fight. No, the, the Talia fight was in... Um... Utah? No, it wasn't in Utah. It was uh, in Singapore, I think. I got to double check that, but I think you might be right. I think but that was in Singapore. Regardless, Talia won that fight. Yeah. And, in my opinion. And, you know, a lot of people were like, well, you didn't beat the champion. You didn't really beat the champion. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and that, that goes back into do you think Shashenko's washed? Because, not washed, but, like, is she peaking or is she on the downhill, the down slope? Because her last couple of fights... Haven't looked as clean as her, no, you know her earlier fights. You see what I'm saying? Like, the rest of the division, the Tatiana Suarez's, the Aaron Blanchfields, the Alexa Grasso's, the Talia Santos's—they're right there now. 
And to be honest, here's the other thing that you consistently brought up, and you brought it up the last time we picked Alexa as a dog. She's low volume, man. So yeah, she, she how, she how, little, how, she how, not, how, she's not low volume, but she is a little, she's, she's definitely lower volume than Grasso. No question. She's so. very low volume, in my opinion. She, she sits back and she, what is it? You told me she didn't crack a hundred strikes and only, she only cracked a hundred plus in strikes yeah. in one fight. And that was against Lamar, Laura Murphy. And that's because she was a punching bag. Yeah. You know, yeah. so she tries to counter strike. So hundred percent, you know, and yeah, she beat up on a whole bunch of 35ers, but look at the 35er division now outside of Nunez, right? Like you realize that the division was never really that good. Yeah. Because, I, you know, it makes sense. You lower weight classes, you go the tough of the competition, the stiff of the competition. So now she's fighting better girls in this division. And I think Alexa, I don't want to say Alexa's got to figure it out because I think Valentina is very capable of winning this fight. She might actually be my lean, to be honest. I think she is my lean. And then Alexa's going to be my bet because at plus 200, I got to take her. Um, but if you look at it, it's kind of like, I'm not sure... I'm not sure what else Valentina could have done. What is she going to do? Not do spinning shit in this fight? She's going to try to counter left hook her the whole fight? I don't think that's a great game plan. I think she's got to be herself and just acknowledge that there were some holes in her game in the last fight. Alexa, in my opinion, has more gaps to fill in this fight. And as a young champion, I think she probably will fill them. The same way Leon did against Camaro the second fight. I mean, the third fight, rather. So, you know... I, yeah, I like Alexa here. I like I like Valentina as the lean, but Alexa's definitely the bet at plus two hundred. I thought this line was gonna be way closer, to be honest. But but you know, I guess people didn't realize like the good work that she did in the first round. Yeah, she did lose second and third, but she kind of got hugged. But notice, and by the way, and this is the the other thing, this is what I keep explaining to you guys. Valentina could didn't really have her way with her on the floor. She just kind of held her, right? That's why she got stood up by Herzog. A little bit of a questionable one on the one that happened when she got it was a got her bit, yeah. got her back taken and subbed, but there was a lot of times where Herzog was giving warnings to stand, you know, that Valentina was just holding her, and it it kind of holds true. I like I said, Valentina's a stronger grappler. Alexa is the more technical grappler. So I would love to see the evolution she's made in her game. She might get her in a ninja choke. She might do a whole bunch of shit, especially when um, she's working there. But the thing is, like I said, Valentina doesn't really shoot for singles. She shoots off the body lock. But the thing is, that's all she really has. She's not really a prolific offensive wrestler. No, her wrestling is overrated. One hundred percent. So it's 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 functional. It's capable, but it is overrated. So how how does uh, how does she get Alexa to the floor, right? If Alexa preps for it a little better this time, now that she's felt her. I mean, she probably does get her to the floor eventually. At least she, once. Shashenko's. She. I mean, you want the real early. She is strong. Yeah, early. No, give her that. You know, she is. She's a strong woman. So, one hundred percent early. I think is when she's most likely to get to the floor. I just don't know if she can sustain it for five rounds. And I think this fight's probably going to go to the decision, or Valentina's going to get nuked in the first round and in the, in the first couple of rounds. But I don't see that. More likely, it's going to go to the decision. You don't. See, you don't see Valentina nuking her early. No, but she has to catch her with a good head kick. Because there's a lot of people who are like, "Hey, man, this fight might either look like." Um, what was the two examples they used? This could either look like Kamaru uh, Leon, or this could look like Pena Nunez. Nunez too. I don't think it's going to look like Pena Nunez too. No, I think it's going to look like Kamaru Leon three or two or like I three three. three. Yeah, three. it was a much more competitive fight. Yeah. I think it's going to be a competitive fight. I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think. Um, I don't think either one of them are knocking each other out. Because I, I think Valentina's proven that she's got a chin. Yeah, I don't think there's no knockouts. I and, think it's and, either sub or decision. And you either, want the real? Either, either side. She has to knock out. She has to catch her with a head kick. That's the only way she's going to knock out Alexa because Alexa has a better chin than she does. Granite chin. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. That's my thought process. The low volume does scare me from Valentina. And is she going to completely change her game plan and how she fights to adjust to beating Alexa. I don't see it because she didn't even do it against Nunez. She didn't put out a lot of output against Nunez, even though I think she won the second fight. But, you know, people don't give her enough credit for that either. But I just don't... I don't know how much Valentina is going to change. I know Alexa might be look like a different fighter in there, which is... There's a possibility of it, at least. Or, or And or she refines what she did in the first fight. And if she does that, I think she wins. Yeah, I mean... 
close decision, I'm going to go to dog. It's going to be close. I, I do think Valentina does pull this one out. I don't know. It's just a weird gut feeling. And like I said, her number is low enough where you got to take advantage of that number. You're never going to get a minus number that low on her, on somebody of, with her capabilities, probably in a long time. Correct. So, well, let's stop Bender, stop Bender Perea, the second fight. Yeah, maybe. That's in the MMA. True. So, but what I, yeah, I, like I said, I'm with you. I think Valentina should win this fight. Yeah, but, but we're already committed to Grasso at plus 200 because plus 200 on Grasso as I a thought, sitting champion is kind of disrespectful. I, th I thought the line was going to be closer yeah, when no, it no. opened up. And it, I was I like, this I, is disrespectful. I thought it was going to be what the line is now. And if the if it was, oh, if it opened up the way the line I is now. I would have bet Valentina. Valentina would have been a bet. This is just, this is a, what they call Play that. value. This is a system play. Correct. You know? You and gotta, by the way, just we're with, playing the lines here. We're not playing. We're playing the line and we're playing the analytics. Yeah. Alexa, more volume. Alexa, younger. Alexa, the more technical grappler. Alexa, um, underrated um, striking offense and defense. A lot of things. I, 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 I think Alexa is being very overlooked in this fight. And it, it's, you know, it's a little disrespectful to have her at plus 200. And what about Shevchenko? Shevchenko just... If Shevchenko can understand what she did wrong in the first, no, but what does she do good? Because I feel like you're giving a lot of praise to Grasso here, and not really, you're not really. Well, giving she's her she's, a, to... she, she's a better counter puncher than she is. She knows how to set up her high kicks a lot better. She knows how to work the body a little better with the kicks. Um, she is a power grappler. She knows how to work to the crucifix. I just think the problem is you see how she's good in all those areas. I feel like the division has caught up with her enough where they're not going to allow her to get into those positions. Like you think Aaron Blanchfield is going to give her room to breathe? Especially if that last performance against Santos, she's just gonna smother her. I agree with that. I think Blanchfield probably fucks her up. Like, and uh, it's crazy. The great Valentina Shevchenko is gonna get smothered by a twenty, a less than twenty-five year old kid. Talia Santos on the run back. How does that look? Um, Marion Ferro, beast. She's a beast, man. I don't know. If she, I think she matches up the best with Valentina. I think that's a favorable matchup for Valentina. But that girl is big. She understands distance very well. There's a lot of, like I said, the division's catching up. But Alexa, I think, is the best overall mixed martial artist of the group. She's She's got the striking. She's got the wrestling. She's got the grappling. Blanchfield doesn't have the striking. Talia doesn't. Talia's actually probably there, too. I'll be honest. Let's, let's put Talia in that conversation. I think Alexa and Talia are probably the most well-rounded martial artists in the division. Valentina, better striker. Grappling. Overhyped grappling's not I mean, bad, not bad. Wrestling's overhyped. Um, Blanchfield, no hands, straight wrestling. No, her hands are getting better though. Her hands are getting better though. No, no, hundred percent. But yeah. relative to the rest, to those other three people I mentioned, yeah. But I mean, then it's it's. I think that's unfair to put Talia over her when she just got beat by. It. Yeah, you yeah, but, but but how did she beat Talia? She beat her because she was the better. She was the better fighter. She beat her because she was the better fighter, but she didn't beat. She's not. The, she's not a better striker than Talia. She's just not. Yeah, but she's a better grappler, right? She's which a, makes and, and which opened up her striking. Yeah. Sure, no problem. Yeah. But if we're talking about and I, and I think her striking is getting better. A hundred. No, I'm not shitting on Blanchfield. Yeah. I think she's gonna be the champion. Yeah, but, I, I just think it's weird to put Blanchfield below Talia when Blanchfield just literally just beats. Sometimes, sometimes the best overall better. The sometimes the better mixed martial artist with better skills doesn't win the fight, bro. That's just what it is. Sometimes it's that you, Conor McGregor's a better mixed martial artist than Khabib. Khabib just has that one ace in the hole with the fucking wrestling and the grappling. He's a, is he a better striker than Conor? No, he's not. But his striking did improve and he did rock Conor. He did, but that's because of the threat of the wrestling. Exactly. Right? No, Which no, makes I, him the better, better overall mixed nah, martial artist. No, nah, right? no, nah, stop, stop. It's, it, you gotta, <laughs> it's technique and this and that. If you want to, if you can set traps because you have a one ace in the hole that makes you distinctly better than your opponent. That's a different thing. Yeah. Right? Like, like, if you have the wrestling in your back seat, you can stand up because people are so afraid of your takedown that it's like they don't want to, they don't want to, they'd rather get punched in the face by you 25 times before the wrestling happens. But if you put them in a straight striking match, he's going to fuck them up. Like, it's just what it is. Yeah. But that doesn't make you the better mixed martial arts. It just makes you the better striker. No, no. But who has the better skills? Like, Alexa has the better boxing. Talia, Talia, let's let's stick to Talia and Blanchfield here. Okay. Talia has the better striking and the better grappling, right? Yeah. And then, then let me never say better grappling. They're like the same level grappling and the same level wrestling. Let's put it that way. I'd say maybe Blanchfield's a better wrestler, but is Blanchfield the striker that Talia Santos is? No, she's not, bro. It's just it's 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 crazy. That's a crazy thought. Now, in terms of the rest of her game, setting it up. Listen, 
Kamar Usman had this same conversation with 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 Seawood before he beat him. And Kamaru even acknowledged it. He said, T. Wood said, if we got into a grappling match, I'd break your arm. If we had a striking match, I'd knock you out. If we had a wrestling match, I'd put you on your back. What did Kamaru Usman say? Sometimes it's not about who is the better person in those areas. Sometimes the better fighter is the person who can put it all together, like Rory McDonald, who beat T. Wood, like Kamaru Usman, who beat T. Wood, right? But are they the better in, in those departments? Are they the better skilled fighters? No. Kamar Usman technically is not more accomplished or accol- doesn't have more accolades than T Wood in wrestling. It's just it's just what it is, right? Technically T Wood's the better wrestler, but in terms of putting it all together, Kamar Usman was the better fighter, right? We're gonna agree to disagree here. Huh? I don't know what I don't know what the disagreement is. Like if you put Celia Santos and Aaron Blanchfield in a striking match, who wins that fight? Blanchfield. Fuck no. You're crazy. You're absolutely insane. Well, okay, in a pure striking match, okay, sure, yeah. Correct. Okay. But this is MMA. I, I, we're talking I, about the I, better n- MMA fighter, right? No, but what who I'm what I'm trying to explain to you is I understand there's a difference between someone who puts it all together correctly and someone who had who is better in every department. Right? Okay. Alexa yeah. Grasso is, is and Talia Santos, in my opinion, are the most well-rounded fighters. Because if if their grappling's not working, they can go to their striking. If their striking's not working, they can go to their grappling. If Ann Blanchard can't get you to the floor, she's on trouble on the feet. She is. If you can get Valentina to the floor, if, if, Talia, if, if Valentina can't get you to the floor, she can lean on her striking. But if she can't lean on her striking, she can't necessarily depend long range on getting you to the floor. It's just... It's just what it is. Tatiana Suarez, would you say she's a better mixed martial artist than Aaron Blanchfield? Or or Valentina? No. She probably fucks both of them up. Because she has that one ace in the hole with her Olympic wrestling. It's it it's just what it is. That that's probably the best point that I made. That to La, Tatiana Suarez has no hands. Okay. She's not the better mixed martial artist. She's just she's just got that one fucking that one fucking sword in the floor that just distinguishes her from everybody else. Her wrestling is just elite. Elite level wrestling. We got off track here. Yes, we did. Who do you got? <laughs> Grasso. Well, oh. Valentina, Grasso the bet though. Okay. I think you agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> good, good shit though. Right. What do you mean right? I don't believe you, man. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you already know the business. Please like, follow, subscribe, comment, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Everybody watching on YouTube right now, drop a comment, hit the like button, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. Subscribe. And for all of our audio listeners, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, we're about at 70 subscribers right now, ladies and gentlemen. It is free 99. Cannot emphasize this enough. We have a goal to hit 100 by the end of the year. Please help us out because it does not cost you a thing. We would never charge you a thing. And guess what, guys? We're giving you free content, free bets, free subscriptions. Nothing here. Everything is free 99. And you put a little money in your pocket from people who are knowledgeable to the sport Stupid. and understand <laughs> and, and, and understand how to bet this sport. I so, know which button that was, so I just hit it. Oh my goodness. I was just hoping it was the one I thought it was. Which was? Cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta go. Gotta go back over. Stupid. It. I'm stupid. Payday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> payday. Payday. You want payday. Got caught stupid on my own podcast. <laughs> Fuck me, right? <laughs> Episode 30 in the books, ladies and gentlemen. Holla at ya. Love ya. Later. <laughs>